Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the fourth episode of The Slowdown. Today's guest is Kevin Kaijuka. Kevin Kaijuka is a very accomplished man, a man who will change the future of Rwanda, and he is here to tell you exactly how he's going to do it. Kevin, take it away. Uh, what I can say is um, I'll, do, I'll do what I can. I know my capacities. I will drive to do what I, to, to, to do best what I do best. Uh, as long as my values align with uh, most people's values, you know that's all that matters, really. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. It's it's because that's the only thing we can control, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> making it, and also making promises that, uh, that you can't keep, man. You know, mm-hmm. I, I can't fully uh, guarantee that you know it will turn out the way you know, the way I want it to turn out. But you know, doing the best we can is the best promise you can make to yourself first and everybody else. Yeah, amen, amen, amen. I think it's it's so easy to fall into this trap, you know, and and then we forget that we are just shonen protagonists, right? Right. <laughs> like, yeah, man. Oh that's, man. That's just right on. Like it's it's a uh, it's complex to understand, but not really once you do, you know. It's, right. Uh, it's just a, it's a road. It's a, it's a journey. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Um, I don't know. In terms of where you are right now what are the steps you're taking to make sure Kevin in 10 years is, is going to be well off well that's a that's a difficult question I'm not going to lie but I'm, ha- I'm happy to answer it man uh, right now I want to do, right now I'm trying to establish uh, a foundation of uh, authenticity you know uh, right now I'm, uh, I'm, I'm I'm well into my last year of university but I still, but I have a lot. That I have, I feel like I have a lot that I can bring to the to the plate, you know. But right now, I'm just trying to lay every uh, every break that I can as perfect as possible. By the way, this is student from Will Smith, <laughs> and uh, and actually do and actually finish what I started with first, and then uh, I can focus on what I want to do in ten years a time uh, once I'm done with this. But that, that, that's not to say that I'm not focusing on what I'm going what I'm trying to be in 10 years. It's just that I'm taking a day, a day at a time. What I will turn out to be in 10 years, I don't know, but I'm working towards it right now. Now, to be specific, mm-hmm. what I do want to do is uh, at some point create a create create films because I feel like the, the, those are mediums of empathy, the engines of empathy. And uh, you can change someone's perspective uh, faster than you can, you can build a road. That's what I'm really trying to get to with this, uh, in this 10 years. How I get there? We'll see. Wow, a word. Kevin Kaijuka, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Ah, Kevin, do you have yes, a question sir. that you would like to ask me? Well, Joe, understanding that uh, you're doing photography, you uh, there's a broad array of um, what you can accomplish with that. But what is, it might sound cliche, but what is the primary source of your motivation to do photography? Because I've known you for a long time. I knew I knew you before you started doing photography. What's what's that what's that thing that gave you the to go for it? Wow. Um, initially, my thought was I'm going to use photography to make money, um, and that's me at like 17. Um, right. And then it turned from I'm going to use photography to to gain fame, and maybe I'm like what 19 now, and that's the the point where I'm getting this this attention. <laughs> I think. I've ended up realizing now that the, basing my photography goals on short-term stuff is is doing absolutely nothing to help improve myself because it's always about I hope this person thinks this look good or I hope this person look, uh, thinks this look amazing um, and I want to just make sure that other young photographers don't don't go through that same process and that's exactly why I want to start a photography school. But yeah. it's also why I'm trying to remain humble and enjoy the fact that I'm still learning. Um, I think it's very easy with social media to fall into the trap of thinking that we are exactly where we need to be, um, especially if if we allow ourselves to internalize praise and allow praise to be our intrinsic motivation. And the problem with that is once the intrinsic motivation disappears, the only thing to do is panic. Um, my, I, I take this interesting story from the Bible about Jesus, um, and he gives this parable where he says, a house built on sand 
will always fall away. But the house built on stone is the most powerful one. And that's something I try to remember every time I feel like I'm losing myself, you know. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm not here alone, you know. I've got God with me, and there's no need to be afraid, really. Man, those are, those are very profound words, man. Uh, these are words, obviously, to live by. But uh, what... So that connection, right? That connection of your spirituality, per se. Mm -hmm. How do you connect that with... Uh, how does that motivate your work? Okay, that's great. That's a great question. I love that. Um, now that I'm, I'm realizing that I'm just a small part of a very large cog... I feel the need to use my current platform to shine light on others. Um, instead of maybe just finding a random homeless person on the street and then ignoring them and walking away. Uh, yeah. Well, for example, want to hear their stories. Um, yeah. When I see someone that I admire, I want to, you know, like with this podcast, I want to give them a platform to speak. Um, I just want to, to use these this ability that I've trained for that you know God has blessed me with that my parents have blessed me with to to help make sure those that wait am I chatting shit fam I'll cut this out <laughs> <laughs> Bro. nah man nah man keep going I, I basically 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 I just want to help those that aren't seen get the attention that they deserve um but I'm trying to also learn that I can't do that for everybody, and it's important for me to keep my circle small and make sure those that are in the circle are are shining bright. And I can't do that for everybody yeah. because not everybody is worth that energy, man. <laughs> no, man, I feel that. I feel that. And you know, man, it's uh, it's no surprise that what you just said has been has definitely been said before. Mm. But what 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 uh, you don't what a lot of people don't realize, me myself included at some point is that the cliches are actually what you know mm. what essentially life life is about even mm. though a lot of people preach it you know to get ahead and uh, further improve their work you know talk about the inspiration you can know when someone is being authentic with what they say amen amen, amen dude and man oh what's I, up bro? i'm like yo you know at first i was talking about like i was thinking to myself about naruto and sasuke and i was always like yo sasuke is lame as hell lame as hell and I didn't realize that I was trying to be Naruto. <laughs> like, I was trying to be this shonen protagonist that had it all. But I forgot that, hey, dude, like, there's Naruto and there's Naruto yeah. Shippuden, you know? So I still feel like I'm in yeah, the Naruto start. stage. Facts, bro. And you start to realize that you can't just, you know, you can't fully judge a person based on the first episode, essentially, you know? Word. Uh, someone like Sasuke, someone, he's a very complicated character. It mm -hmm. takes time to understand how complex he is and why why he's doing what he's doing. You're not you're not forced to sympathize with him. You just you just have to understand that you know Word. that's just you, everything has a has a root Word. from where it comes from. You know, uh, you can't just someone makes the, makes a decision based on experiences. Mm -hmm. Now, w whatever decisions they make don't justify. It, you know, whatever experiences they have, sorry, my bad, uh, don't justify. It. Uh, the decision they make. However, you still see a window of empathy as to why someone might be a certain way, which is the, which tra which translates well to life, man. Anime matters. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag anime matters. Anime matters. <laughs> <laughs> On the growth of the human body, bro. Yeah, man. I think it's the it's growth, like yeah, mentally. I was I was listening to the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, and there's a chapter that talks about there being two births. There's your first yeah. birth where, you know, you're shoved into the world, you're still living with your parents and everything, and, you know, you're still w relatively within the cage. But the second yeah. rebirth comes from intrinsic motivation. It's not about pleasing mom and dad. It's what am I right. going to do with the right. tools that I have? Exactly. Because essentially, you know, uh, well, for me anyway, my parents, every time I did something, my parents would always say, would always tell me that, uh, you know, they've lived their lives, you know. Uh, I, for me, I thought it was just another way for them to lecture me, you know, to, to get my shit together. But it took, with the more you grow, the older you get, you realize that it's actually true. You have your own life to live, man. And then whatever decisions you make, though there's repercussions, whether they're, whether, they're, whether they're positive or negative, it's just that you have to understand that there's, there's, a, there's a reaction to what you do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, 
It's about it's about taking responsibility for the reaction. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. Yeah, you know. The dog again with this uh, particular skill set of photography. You've been doing this uh, longer than I have. Right now, I just got into cinematography, which essentially is photography. Yeah. But you're trying to tell a story visually. You still have to uh, you still have to understand that movies are, are, are motion pictures. The picture that these are. These are in spots that someone is in. This is a position at some point someone is in. Like, what are you trying to tell? What you what are you trying to show with that one picture? Mm. That will that will stick to them for a long time, long time to come. You know, word. they think of a subject and then they relate it to your picture. You know, word, word. Uh, like for you, right? Do, do you do you plan on expanding on your photo, on your photography uh, skill set? And if so, where are you trying to go with it? You know, I think. Oh, I mean, that's just a great question. Oh, my goodness. Um, <laughs> the major change I'm trying to do is is start working on long-term projects. I think, personally, I got caught so caught up in social media and so caught up in the instant gratification. And it was easy for me to be like, oh, my goodness, you know, ah, I can't believe I didn't get this many likes. I can't believe I didn't get this many likes. I can't believe I didn't get this many likes. Instead of saying, you know, wow. I have this many likes on Instagram. Now, for me, once I realized that, it was like, okay, cool. Instagram was the first stage. That was the easy entry point. But now I'm trying to go into the photography world. And with that comes this, like the need for humility, the need to say that I need to actually learn to let my photos do their own talking. I think I'm, I'm, I'm naturally a good speaker. I know how to enunciate. I know how to, you know, speak. <laughs> But um, I need to also accept that you can't really do that with photos. And I think that's a personal challenge for me. Like, if, if I were to just do, like, I don't know, voiceover narration, that's easy. You just have to speak and you can convince people. But with the photo, right. you don't get that, right? At an art gallery, you don't get to just sit by and, well, hey, guys, um, this is... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. You just got to be with it. So I'm trying to do more documentary photography, and I won't say too much. I mean, I think yeah. I, by the end of the year, I should have a very comprehensive project. Let me not let it out. I want to I wanna shock the world when it comes out. But, um, yeah, there's work going on behind the scenes for sure. Of course, man. The, every piece of thread has to fit that tapestry that you're trying to build. You're oh, trying wow. to make, you know? Ugh. Uh, well, man, <laughs> that's what the people they were supposed to be. No, you know what it is. But you know what it is. The older we get, is, the smarter we get. It is, man. Yeah, yeah. exactly, bro. It's, it, uh, it's still patience. Patience, yeah. Uh, even though it's still not easy, man. Yeah. I, I speak, and it might sound very hypocritical. I'm not a very patient person, person myself, but you know, I still preach patience. Again, just to show that we're not, we're not all. In, in some ways, we're all hypocritical beings. Even if, even in some ways, I would, wouldn't want to admit. You know, it's some uh, again, not uh, not not generalizing, but uh, there's still a quality of that when it comes to because you you you, you speak based on your experiences and you're yes. kind of biased based on yes. your experiences. You know, yes. but as long as there's a clear, cohesive uh, plan with what you want to do, again, no guarantees. It's just it's just. The fact that you're pushing. Yeah, I think I think there's beauty in no guarantees, man. There's beauty in no exactly. guarantees because, you know, I, I, I would say, for example, you know, you're running up a hill and it's so easy to say, well, that hill is way too high, I can't do it. But now when you shift your paradigm and you're telling yourself, running up this hill is going to be so fun because I can't wait to get to the top, boom. Right. Paradigm shift, you're done. That's all you need to remember. So even for me with the photography, it's like, Man, I'm not gonna be able to do a long form documentary series. It's instead that oh, I'm just gonna do a long form documentary series. That's fine. Simple as. <laughs> you know, it's, no, it's it's like you mentioned before. Uh, you gotta have that intrinsic value, man. and that intrinsic value has to come. Well, th that intrinsic value brings that intrinsic motivation, you know, because that value is something that you build upon, you know. Mm -hmm. And the foundation, as as always, what is what really holds the house together. Oh, wow. Whatever comes after, as long as you have a you have a good place to that you're building on, that can come off unless you force it to come off. You know. Wow. So. Wow. Wow. But yeah, man. This is uh, this is me being motivational. Hey man, I miss I, I miss know, when the motivational talk was just like, hey man, we're gonna play basketball tomorrow, man. Don't worry, boom, we go. <laughs> <laughs> like they don't teach you in school that one day, you know, hey man, you. You got. You're gonna have to pay rent, man. This is how it works. 
during the film, but expecting the unexpected, man. Exactly. Like the only, honestly speaking, the on, the only thing that I wouldn't expect at that age is it's the fact that my DST, the thing I set for DSTV, uh, to for for a show to come through, and then uh, and then uh, you know, uh, what are they called? Uh, it's a commercial. It's something else. Tanesco, Tanesco just cuts off part for home. Oh, you know? man. <laughs> Actually, yo, that's beautiful. That's, that's beautiful. Like, that's you know. beautiful. Yeah, because like it's easy to just go and say, ah, Tanesco is so annoying. God, I can't do anything today. But the attitude needs to be like, oh, power cut. Well, that's fine. I'm going to go take a walk. Yeah, man. You know, like, can you imagine if we had that, that, that thinking capacity? We might have, but, you know, we're very influenced by people around us who we're living with people, essentially, our families, our friends. Uh, so you really, I don't, I don't know if you, okay, what would you, what would you, how, how do you think it would have turned out if you had that mental capacity of saying, okay, Tanesco just, you know, they just, they just got the power. Let me just go for a walk or let me just go and clear my head and just, you know, uh, wow, feel I think, feel, feel outside. Like, how do you think it would have turned out? Like, okay. I'm going to go on a long form rant. Acting in the yeah. as, as, instead of just reacting to a situation. Right. Um, I think for this, I'm going to go for a long-form story, and I'm just going to tell like a story about my life that will answer that question. Um, personally speaking, I mean, I grew up atheist because I always felt like I was forced to go to church. Um, yeah. And so my idea was, people are so annoying. Yeah, I'm an atheist now. And then I realized I was kind of into everything else. And so I dislocate my knee when I'm 11. And the only person that had to teach myself how to walk again at such a young age was me. So I'm telling myself, mm-hmm. well, then I'm just going to do this whole life. I, I was normalizing you struggle. You to rewalk again. Yeah, but it, the thing is, I've had to do that four times. I've dislocated my knee at 11. I dislocated my knee at 13. Dislocated my knee at 16. And then dislocated it again at 19 years old. And what I realized was the rewalking process got easier every time. You know, because when I was 11, dude, worst pain in my life, I could not stand up. And I, I, t- I, ca- I ended, up t- ended up telling myself that, you know what, I can't use my left leg for any sport. I can't use my left hand for anything. I had completely shut down this side of myself. Um, and I think over time, I started getting atrophy, right? It, it, I literally couldn't feel the left side of my body because I wasn't using it. And when I decided, you know what, hey, let's just do it. And I just started running, man. I started running. And the other day was a really great one. I ran, what is it, 15 kilometers. And I, and I kept telling myself, I would never be able to do that. Like, I'm not the person that does it. But like you're saying, working out, man, it, it, working out is a brilliant proof of discipline. I think that's one thing no one will ever be able to take away from you. But like now I want to translate that, you know, wonderful feeling that I have and help other people have the opportunity to shine that on themselves. And I'm doing that with this podcast yeah. where you know I'm talking to people that I think inspire me and I think will bring about change. But I want to also now just go and just do documentary photography. Like, that's my next thing. I don't care about the self-portraits. Like, I've done that. I know I look good. It's been established. What am I constantly doing the self-portraits for, you know? I want my work... But it doesn't feel personal to you. Yeah, it doesn't feel personal because, like, with the self-portraits... Everyone sees the final product. There's never that, hey guys, so here's the behind the scenes. This photo that you see took me eight hours to develop. <laughs> um, you know, for the longer form edits, and no one gets to really see the whole right. thing. Like with Instagram, you know, I, always, I would always get confused because like people would come and say, oh, this photo looks amazing. But in my head, I'm like, I could have done this edit so much better. Mm-hmm. And it was that weird thing, but now that I'm in photography school and surrounded by my peers, I had this really drastic paradigm shift. And I think at first I was scared of it, but now I'm excited by it. Like, it's nice to be learning. It's, it's dope. Learning is actually fun. And it was only yeah, exactly. through accepting God that I got there, man. When I was like, no, it's okay to pray. It's okay to be humble. It's okay to do these things. And that in turn led me to be like, well, if God loves me this much, how much do my parents love me? How much do my family love me? How, how much do the people that I call brothers love me? I'm not alone. I'm, I don't have to be Sasuke. It's okay to be Naruto. Mm. Boom! <laughs> and then you just drop them uh, the, the hypothetical mic. Drop oh, a Rasengan. Uh, 
I really don't know if I really don't think there's any there's anything more to add to that to, to what you just said. Mm-hmm. But uh, going back to he explained it, clear, it was crisp and clear. Mm. But going back to your point on uh, you wanting to to show well to do documentary series, you said that people only end up seeing the the, the final the final product. That's an, an, that's another reason why I. Well, it's a leadership. That's another. That's another reason. That's another reason why I get into cinematic arts, man. Mm. There's a, there's a collab there's a collaboration aspect. Yes. Collaboration aspects to yes. it. You don't just work as a director or as a writer. Mm. You as a film as a filmmaker in general, you're everything. You you assume yourself to be everything. The producer. It might sound very egotistical, but it really isn't. Right. You might think of yourself as a producer because you you want a movie to make. You're gonna finance it yourself. Uh, you're gonna look for someone to edit your stuff. Mm. So you're gonna have to work with an editor. You're gonna have to work with a cinematographer. You're gonna have to work with uh, with uh, with a costume designer, with a makeup artist. Uh, uh, this, this is just different people that come together to create right. world, you know, right. something. To another, uh, essentially, another reality to uh, another an, another entry into reality. You know, she empathizes. You know that it's not a reality, but it's just a reality where you hope to get something from. You know? Right, right. But at the same time, it's done by people. You, 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 you're working together to solve a problem that is creative, that is not tangible, that is not here. You know, you just hope that the result comes out as you expected it. You know, that does that, does that, like you said, does this, does this beauty to uncertainty? Mm. But once you're collaborating with the right people, or you know, does uh, you have a clear cut idea of what, what something is supposed to look like? You don't, you don't take credit for yourself. You, like uh, again, going back to the points that you mentioned, where you said uh, you're part of a bigger, bigger, a, a bigger thing, you know, bigger than you, which is essentially why filmmaking is really special. Like you, you are very small. Even, even though you uh, you get credit for creating the stuff, you know that it's not. That's not the case. There's a there's a whole community of people that came together to make this thing what it is. You know. Mm. That's the that's one thing uh, that's one thing that I really I really like and really and that really translates to life, man. Because you can't you can't make it by it. No matter no matter no, no matter how much, no matter the mentality, whether that that you know, there's this one mentality that I don't particularly uh, attract myself to, the one where it's uh, the the world is against me mentality, you know. Right. Uh, You're the angsty teenager. That's, that's a bit <laughs> exactly, but that's a bit false because in the sense of. The world really isn't against you because they don't. The world doesn't know you. You know, you're born into this world. This the world doesn't world. care. Yeah, no, world doesn't it care. doesn't care. You know, yeah. it's up to you to put your suit on, whatever cho- whatever suit you want to choose. Make sure it's authentic and just walk the game, bro. Like it's right, just it's right. just how it is. You know, uh, again, just it's not easy. And I'm speaking as if I've gone, uh, I've lived life like you know. So no, give just, yourself credit. Case, Affirm yourself. Just, Affirm yourself. <laughs> Affirm yourself, man. Come on. But it's just what you see, man. It's um, you see even seeing how people react to stuff. You know, yeah. like well, whenever you see artists talk about, I've seen how the, the, I got motivated by by, the, by by how it grew up. They, they, they might not be talking about the family directly, but maybe the people that were around. Because you know? actions speak louder than words, man. Like you can see through someone's eyes that someone went through something. You know, you might not want to bring it up then, but you you feel it. Like you you empathize. With you know, the, and the fact that you know you bring that whole community to make one project, and they feel that same way. It's just, it's just beautiful, man. All right, man. Amen. Amen. Amen to all that. Like, I think it's important that I mean, I mean, of course, going to like the anime example, like Sasuke is the one who lost. Sasuke went through you know what years and years of. I can do yeah. this alone. And, you know, we saw Sasuke be badass, right? You know, Sasuke ended up you know having the Chidori, and you know everyone is like, oh my god. But you end up realizing that the one who ended up being Hokage wasn't necessarily the one who was the smartest at the beginning. It wasn't the natural-born genius. It wasn't the the person who already had it all. It was the one who worked to better himself, but recognized that the key to bettering oneself is listening and working with others. Because if you try to do exactly. it alone, eventually you crash, man. Eventually you crash. So would you say that Sasuke... Okay, so because you did, you did end up saying at some point that... Uh, uh, it's okay to be like Naruto, right? Even though Naruto is the main protagonist, right. uh, like you still you still go through Sasuke's journey with him. Like, so would you say that who, who do you identify with the most? Either I think, Naruto or Sasuke? I think, or is it 
what I'm learning is that it's okay to switch up as need be. Because, like, look at Naruto, right? At first, he was the whiny baby. Eh, Sasuke has everything I can do. And that's what I was stuck in. Because that's the easy thing to do. It's so easy to be like, yeah. I will never achieve this. But I ended up realizing that the important thing was to go from that transition, you know, from that Naruto to ship it in. Of, like, wait. If I want to be the strongest, the best, or whatever, I just do it. So now I just work out. I'm not telling myself I can't do I can't do body weights. I just do it, and the results are showing. I'm not telling myself, oh gosh, I'm never gonna be able to get a modeling contract. It's more like just look for them. You know, it's it's pro it's the difference between proactivity and reactivity. Basically, it's easy to be reactive, and I think it's a natural human instinct, like an animal, right? To always be reactive. You're constantly aware of your surroundings. And when those surroundings get disrupted, ah, you're scared. But the benefit of, of the human mind, of the ability to do long-term thinking, is that you can have that scared moment, and it's okay, but it's also cool to just chill, not necessarily immediately blow up. Just think and remember that, yo, it's fine, right? And I think the, the winter here was definitely a metaphor for me. I've never experienced winter in my life. I've always lived in hot countries, and I've never really had to... To experience what it is to to sleep hungry and to not feel comfortable, right? You know, I, I've never really had to complain about my heater not working. <laughs> and I think that was where my paradigm really shifted drastically. Because yeah. I'm so used to being in charge. I mean, listen, I'm 22. I already have a degree. I've worked, you know, multiple jobs. But that was always me in control. Like, I, I can always do work fast when I feel like I'm in control of the situation. When I'm planning my time, I know how my day is working. It's it's easy for me, um, especially with networking. But now with the winter, it was like, oh, goodness, man, you're actually not in control of all of this. You can't change the weather. No matter what you do, it's going to be cold outside. And at first, for like the first two or so months, I'm like, well, I can't go outside. Nothing I can do. And especially with the laws from um, with lockdown, they were like, yo, you guys can't go past level four. There's no going outside. Yeah. Oh, that was a German yeah. accent. <laughs> you stay inside. Stay, stay. And you're just like, okay. I mean, fine. And at first, yo, I was totally cool. I mean, I, I thought to myself, you know, it's just going to be a chill two weeks, you know? And then all of a sudden, it's like, no, it's it's going to last a lot longer. And also, there are no flights allowed outside. So it's like, what? Every every bit of control that I have, you know, knowing when I'm going to be able to go back home, knowing that I can just go shopping, knowing that I can just go to school, knowing that I can just go shoot. Actually, yeah, the, the loss of photography, I think, was what hit me hardest. Because photography is something I always had. And you'll notice with my projects... I do the self-portraits every once in a while, but more often yeah. than not, I'm doing other portraits because that's what my favorite thing is. Like, I like identifying beauty in others. That, for me, is like amazing. That's what I love about photography. But now it was like, sorry, dude. None of that for you. You're not allowed to go with your camera outside. Also, we're closing down school. Also, you can't use Uber. And it's like, yo. Right? And I went reactive and I was like, I can't do anything. But now that I'm proactive, I'm like, it, it doesn't really matter. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. At some point, you, you grow to accept the reality that you live in, bro. Like, it's, even though it's hard to accept, like, honestly speaking, we can't, the reason why I say this is because we can't fully accept that we're going to be in lockdown for, I don't know how much time we're going to be in lockdown for. Well, uh, by the way, where I am here in, uh, in Arkansas, in the U.S., uh, anyway, the U.S. in general, they're starting to open up again. So, right now, you're kind of torn between, so, is this over, or are we just forcing our hand, you know, to just, mm-hmm. to, uh, to not, you know, to not respond to the laws of nature, essentially. You know, but even if, even if we don't have control, we don't have control over that. Like, even if we open up again, like, is this, is the world going to go back to the way it was? Uh, is everyone going to interact the way they used to? You know, because that's a bit scary. Even though we don't think about it until it happens, it's. it's I think I, that, I that lockdown that has stripped humans down to their bare essentials. Like, oh yeah, because even for me uh-huh. now, for that's example, a very good way. it deconstructed us essentially. Yeah, because yep, you know, I, we, we're used to, for example, you know, like let's let's say us growing up in Brayburn. It yep. was easy because you know you you lean and everyone finds their group. 
whether it's the anime lovers or just, you know, the kids that come from Tanzania or the kids that come from East Africa, like there's always that click and you hold on to that mm-hmm. and it's, there's stability in that, you know. But now with, with COVID, for example, that's gone. There Can't are... forget the TGT. Can't forget the TGT crew. <laughs> TGT. But the TGT group were probably, but they probably weren't. They probably weren't called that. But you know, you already know who I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm not going to say too it. much. I'm not going to say too much. <laughs> 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 they know themselves, bro. They know themselves. But like, yeah, man. We, like I was walking the other day, and I had to have my mask on, having my hoodie up, and all that stuff to keep my head wrap on. And I started wondering why people were always like running away from me. And I'm trying to smile to them to let them know everything's okay. But now all they see is this huge man just barreling towards them. They think I'm walking really fast. I just have long yeah. legs. I'm not even chasing you. And it was so hilarious the other day. And I think this is like a great <laughs> summation of like the difference between like reactivity and proactivity. I came yeah. back from my jog and I'm walking back to my apartment. You know, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling pumped. I'm like, woo! I'm in my own world. I'm having a good time, right? But man, this family looks at me and they're like, oh my goodness, this man is out to destroy us. We must leave. And I'm, I'm watching these guys like, oh goodness, let's get away. And in my head, I was He's laughing. Yeah, I'm laughing to myself. Like, what? <laughs> You know, Where are the chains? <laughs> and that's what I was like, oh, that's what mental slavery is. And in a greater sense, yeah. that's what capitalism is. Capitalism has kept us in these chains. It keeps you in the routine. And it's it's so easy to fall into it. And I think so many of us right now that are losing our jobs, that are losing that school or whatever, it's just it's crazy. It's crazy. Yep, and it's yep, and it's like you said, it's really down it's really uh uh stripping down what is it? you use the word I forgot the word De- you, it deconstructed our humanities you know uh, mm-hmm. but you, to the point where we have to realize that we have to act as a unit Amen. you know that capitalism aspect of it of securing your own it doesn't go a long way bro. it doesn't until you until you find yourself in, in a position where you still need you and you always find yourself in a position where you always need help bro mm-hmm. and th- mm-hmm. that will really humble you and to realize that you know get your own isn't the, the, isn't the, isn't the way you know yeah. it's not the only way yeah at least. yeah I mean, I, I tell you what, one thing I'm definitely, you know, as much as I, I give thanks to God, I want to also, like, just highlight my parents, right? Because my yeah, whole life, yeah. I was always defensive, you know what I'm saying? It's all, you know, if, if someone would come and say, hey, man, you can do better with your grades. My thing was, oh, my goodness, why do you never acknowledge me? And now I'm like, hey, you know you did a good job, right? Okay, cool done because like they, I don't think that even, okay. especially the older I get I realize that parents never do anything they do if it's not from a place of love you know as much yeah. as we it's easy for us to like be in that bubble and be like oh my gosh they did this because you know they did all these things I'm like now this the reason that I was given the discipline that I had as a kid was to prepare me for the yeah. world and I think the only issue now is that with quarantine especially being a, a creative I'm acknowledging or rather having to acknowledge that I am very much me now, you know? Because I, I always had the security yeah. of, like, I know I'm going home. This is not real. I don't really care. But now it was that shift of, you have to, but what are you going to do about it? And I realized that all I needed to do was just accept it. And and they were with me. You know, there was never a time where I was like, I need, I need something, or I need this help, or I need this, where I wasn't given it. Right, and I think at first I, I couldn't believe that. I couldn't believe that I, I didn't have to be defensive. You know, even with you guys, yeah. I'm thinking to myself, oh my gosh, you know, my friends, people that I call my brothers, who have called me brothers so many times, they're probably just doing it because they just they they, they think that I don't know. <laughs> they have to. Uh, we have to feel sorry for now. So. Exactly. That's honestly, honestly, that's a, I don't think that's a sign of good of good friendship. Because if you know that it's Whatever, if you know that you, if you know that you're just going to agree with everything, there's no room for growth, you know. Amen. As a as a unit, actually, there's no room for growth. There's no way we'll be out here talking about the things we talk about in the group uh, without having been on grinding on each grinding each other's teeth or some shit. Just just being very upfront with them, exactly with each other. Exactly. With exactly. a lot of the with, with a lot of the decisions that we uh, we made, man. And the fact that we did it, we did it like in. In very, in very distant, yeah. uh, in very distant situation, it just goes to show you that it, 
verbal communication goes a long way, man. I think verbal like, communication uh, is. And I'm not going to so get important. into like the one on one because there is no such thing as verbal communication one on one. It's just you yeah. have to speak it. Don't keep it in. With, yeah. 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 yeah, man. Wow, that was great. Kevin Kayajuka, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Right? Oh my goodness. It's and crazy that yeah, even bro, this. My socials? Yeah, how should, I, how should we plug you, bro? Let's go. Uh, follow me on Twitter at uh, Simugaza8. Uh, but you can find my handle as uh, One Armed Wolf. Hey. The only one armed wolf. You know, yes. you know what I love? What I love about like long term yeah. friendships like this is that you get to have the inside yeah. jokes and anyone listening yeah, to the yeah. podcast doesn't get it, right? I come here yeah. talking about it. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether they get it or not. Exactly. Get it. It's so funny. That's I love it. Enjoy <laughs> <Enjoying> it, man. <laughs> Anyway, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, Kevin Kayajuka, oh, thank you so much. Uh, hey, you've already plugged yourself, man. Let's not get, uh, let's not get too wild. Let me, alone, man. Let me just give myself clout. I never give myself clout. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to tag you, by the way. You don't got to worry. I got you. I got you. I got you. Yeah, bro. I know you got me, man. I'm hey. just trying to be funny. Hey. Attention grabbing. I fuck with that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but yeah, man. <laughs> All right, listen. Let's just end the but episode yeah, here. Thank you for having me. You're absolutely welcome, Kevin. You know what I think? I'm going to interview each and every person from the group when they have time. Right, you because you my, my thing is... It's a liberating experience. Oh, God. Yes. Liberation. Ah. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Should we actually just make this a long-form podcast? Because I've been wanting to do one that's like an hour long. Yes. Yeah, bro, because it's more... It's natural that way. Because even, even the fuck-ups, the fuck-ups add to that. Right. They add to the substance of the content. By the way, you can't At swear, least they know Kev. Be genuine with what Kev, we're talking Kev, about. listen, there's you no. You know, like this, like this podcast in general was just impromptu, bro. Like, yo, you just want to chat. True. And it went through smoothly, bro. True. I mean, in my opinion, it went smoothly. <gasps> Do we start but recording yeah. ourselves playing Apex Legends? I don't see why not, bro. I do not see why not because I, I feel, yep, the, the uh, our true colors would, would come out there properly. Uh, well, how I'm actually not that deep in reality, you know. <laughs> but but you still you you see the deepness okay. manifest in, uh, as we play. I'm ready. I'm back. I'm back in my mode, bruh. I'm back. I'm activated. This is what we're gonna do. That's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna end this podcast. We're gonna make our own gameplay video, and that'll be the start of something. What I need you to do is just screen record. Just screen record All your right. footage. I will take care of doing the audio, and then we're done. All right. Aye. All right, yes. we'll do. Ladies we're and... just record on the PS. Yeah, you just screen record on the PS, bro. Um, let me just end this call I and then do you. the outro and then I'll join you up in a bit, man. Aye, right, man. Cheers. Ladies and gentlemen, the lovely Kevin Kaijuka. Well, that's what, the fifth time we've introduced him. But do you listen to the credits anyway? Comment Tutti Woofle, however you want to spell that, under the comments. <laughs> And please leave any questions you may or may not have. I'll be more than happy to answer. Bye-bye.